Good morning, everybody. As Chris said, my name is Kerry Greenberg with Digital Media Nation. I'm very honored to be here, and thank you for taking the time to come to this lunch and learn today. I'm also excited to have my business partner, Chris Snellgrove, here in the back. You'll get to meet him a little bit later, as well as our Vice President of Marketing, Ed Peterson. So thanks, guys, for being here. I'm very excited to share some cutting-edge technology with you uh, that can quite literally transform your practice. I have a couple of our current clients here. Now some others will be showing up who you can also talk to later. But if you are in a place where you want to grow your practice, you want to attract new patients to your practice, or you just want to find out what's happening with the true patient experience so you can continue to cultivate that environment inside of your practice focused on the customer experience or the patient experience, then you're in for a real treat today. A little bit about Digital Media Nation. Who the heck are we and why are we here, right? We are um, a full service marketing agency. My business partner, Chris, and I have been in the entrepreneurial world for over 30 years, specifically helping businesses, and a practice is a business, right? Helping businesses do what they do best, which is provide the services that you provide, while at the same time giving a process in place to grow your business. We work with hundreds of businesses throughout the country, car dealers, home services, and we work with hundreds of medical practices across the country. So I'm excited just to share some content, some best practices that you're welcome to take notes and take back to your practice and use that we know is proven ways to help drive traffic to your location. So we're just going to kind of jump right in. I'm a little bit interactive. I move around a lot. I may ask some questions. So so bear with me. In order for me to paint the picture of why this is so important, I need to walk through why and how patients are searching online. So my first question is, how important is the patient experience today? In your practice, how important is the patient experience today? Extremely, extremely important. I bet you if I asked everybody that question, everybody would say it's extremely important. But what's changed over the last five or 10 years is it used to be okay to provide a good customer experience or a good patient experience. But when I ask you this question, think of yourself as the patient or as the customer. We have to, in any business, wow our patients and our customers today. Because if we don't, with the onvent of digital technology, they can just hit a button and find somebody else. So customers have to be, or patients have to be wowed today. What about this question? On a scale from one to five, rate the patient experience that you want provided in your practice or that you provide. I'm going to call on you. Absolutely, five. Absolutely a five. I did ask this question at a big training I did with, I think, Chris, there was five or six or eight medical providers and a bunch of assistants, and someone raised their hand and said, oh, about a 3.2. <laughs> I don't think they're there anymore, but of course, everybody wants to provide a five, and I hope that you do provide a five. But here's a real question. How do you know? Feedback. How else do you know if you provide a good patient experience? Surveys. Surveys. Classic answers that we hear all of the time. Couldn't agree more. Feedback. Patients come back. Maybe they tell some of their friends. So you provide a good patient experience. Your patients know you provide a good patient experience because they're giving you feedback. They're happy. They come back. But what about the people out there who are in the market for your services or your care that have never been to your practice before. How do they know that you provide a good patient experience? Online, Online reviews. So the three questions to kind of make this hit home a little bit more is, do your current patients trust you in the care that you provide? I guarantee everybody here is going to say yes, right? How important is it if somebody is thinking about the care that you provide, or they're referred by a primary care doctor, or their friend tells them go to this practice, how important is it that prospective new patients know that they can trust you? Would you say that's important today? So how do you communicate this trust? One way is online reviews. The other way is to continue to tell that story through patient experience marketing. Why is trust so important today? By a show of hands, who looks at reviews today? Everybody does. 
Forbes magazine, a little small company, wrote an article specifically about patients and patient care. And it says, it, I'm not gonna read this whole paragraph to you, but in the online space, when patients are looking online, there's a lot of anxiety as to who they're gonna go with or who they're gonna uh, let, let attend to them. And they're trying to choose who their provider is or to stay with that provider or where someone refers them to. And the answer to it is de delivering that trust. That's what patient experience marketing is all about. So our objectives today is I'm gonna continue to educate you on how patients are making decisions online. How to get more reviews from patients. Who wants more reviews? Who's ever had a patient who had a bad experience? Wait times, they don't understand triage, whatever the case may be, right? You wanna protect yourself from those negative situations. But you wanna learn about them because it's good for you to know, right? How to build and market a five-star online reputation while at the same time being HIPAA compliant because there's some HIPAA issues when it comes to reviews and responding reviews. So these are the things that we're gonna share with you today and I hope you can learn a lot from what we're gonna share with you. But I gotta take you a little bit deeper as to how patients are conducting research. Anybody ever heard of Google? 91% of internet searches start with Google. So you have to always ask yourself, how does my practice look on Google? Does it match the true patient experience that I provide? Because patient search behaviors, and these aren't my figures, these come from another big company called Bright Local, 78% of patients today say that reviews allow them to trust the practice more. We talked earlier about how important trust is. 84%, this statistic's amazing to me, trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations. I'm kind of an old guy, I remember it's just, where do you go when someone tells you where to go, but now people look at the reviews. 94% of patients say an online review could make them avoid a practice. That's why these statistics are so important. And again, 91% of patients look at online reviews before choosing a provider. I'm not saying that they look at reviews and it's a green light, red light, whether I'm gonna go, but if someone says go to XYZ practice or my primary care doctor says go to this practice, and I just Google them to get the address, to get the phone number, to look at their website, guess what I'm gonna see? Their reputation. So let's look at it a little bit further. If you moved to Dallas, Texas, and you did not know where to go, you needed a dermatologist, and you Googled dermatologist in Dallas, Texas, or somebody said, go to this place, and you just looked up in Google, again, 91% of internet searches start with Google, would you go to this location, a 3.8 with 10 Google reviews? No. How about this one, 5.0? Would you go here? Someone said how many reviews? Two reviews. No. It's like, it's like I put you here to help me out. Thank you very much. You passed the test. How about this place, a 4.9 with 228 reviews? More stars, more reviews, gives you more opportunities, which translates to more revenue. That's what... Glad you said that. We're getting there in a second. We'll get there in a second. You're, exact, you're exactly correct. So we'll get there in a few seconds about frequency, relevancy, and content. It's not just about the star ratings and the quantity. We'll get there in a few seconds. Bright Loco also, just so you know for your practice, asks to come to your point. When judging a local business on reviews, what do you pay attention to? 54% of respondents say the average star rating. Ironic thing about this figure is it's gone down in the last year from 58% because they're starting to look, I'm sorry, 
at quantity of reviews. This number has gone up 14%. So based on the size of your practice, based on how many patients you're seeing, you have to have a relative amount of reviews that you can then market out in your patient experience marketing based on how many patients that you see. Let me take it a step further. Google My Business listings. I'm sure you all have one. That's where you kind of house your, house your reviews. Here is, this is actually a client of ours, Gwinnett Pediatrics and Adolescent Medicine, 4.7 with 133 Google reviews. It used to be years ago that someone just looked at the rating and made a decision, kind of like we did earlier. But now statistics say that it's the quantity. So in, 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 in um, proportion to the amount of patients you're seeing, frequency. If you have 230 reviews, but you haven't had any in the last 30 days, that's a discounting factor when people are looking at your reviews. People look, want to see a consistent flow because they know you're seeing patients every single day. And content. Content is even more important today, what people are saying. So they're not just looking at the rating. They're not just looking at the quantity. They're looking at the frequency and the content. And unless you have all four of these speaking the true patient experience that you provide, you might have a gap. A gap is defined as the difference between the true patient experience in relative to quantity, frequency, content, and rating. The difference between what one looks when they see your practice online versus what you actually provide. Does that make sense? And when you match the true patient experience in form of those four items to what you actually look like online, then you then have a story to tell that you can do through patient experience marketing. So what about you? Do you look at Google ratings? Let's step outside of the healthcare industry just for a second. Let's say you were going for a hotel in Birmingham, Alabama. Would you pick this 2.9 with 160 Google reviews? Because you might get this. How about the 4.5 with 354 Google reviews? In answer to your question about quantity, people know that people stay at hotels all the time. So based on the business, you expect a high quantity. But this, this 4.5 with 354 you might get a room like this, which is what we all want when we go somewhere, right? This statistic right here from Bright Local is fascinating to us. When, patient, when do patients use online review sites? Check this out. 72% as the first step when picking a doctor or a location. 19% after they've picked the doctor to validate their choice. That's 91% of patients are now looking at your reputation before they come to you and to validate whether they picked the right place. That's only 91%, but guess what? The other, 90, the other 9% are just using it to evaluate you when they're already a patient. So unless you are loud and proud about the patient experience, last time I looked, you have a 100% shot of somebody going somewhere else. That's why it's so important. So I'm gonna share with you, that was a dive into why it's so important. I'm gonna share with you exactly the blueprint that you can take back to your practice today to maximize this strategy inside of your practice. I'm gonna give you the blueprint right now, the five steps for success. The first one, I know that you are patient experience focused, but you have to make sure that everybody in your practice from the time someone calls to the time someone leaves is absolutely focused on the patient experience. They have to put themselves in the shoes of that patient and wow them. And getting constant feedback by reviews at a high proportion to the amount of people that you're seeing gives you invaluable feedback to be able to focus on patient experience. Ask for reviews. I'm sure you've all asked for reviews, but it's not as easy as asking as we all know. You have to have a process in place, maybe signage in your location, maybe review cards, maybe emailing and texting your patients asking for reviews. Train your team. Train your team to be focused on the patient experience, be telling them that you care about the patient experience and their feedback is very valuable. 
That way, when you ask a patient for their feedback, it's not the first time that they're aware that you care about their feedback. I can tell you a little story. Many of my successful practices across the country, when someone walks in, they're trained to say something along the following. Hey, Mr. Greenberg, thank you for coming in today. Whatever we can do to make your, your, stay, your, your visit here better, please let us know. That's all they're saying. Because they're setting up that patient so that when they finish, do we meet your expectations? Yes, great. Would you mind giving us your feedback? It means the world to us. That's an example of training somebody on the enunciation of why reviews are so important. Manage your reputation. Reputation today is just like any other facet of your business, from financial, coding, human resources, operations. If you're not taking time to focus on reputation, you could be losing an opportunity to maximize your reputation and then market out your reputation. But most importantly, all those things above help you have a story to tell. You have to tell your story. I'm not a big book reader, but telling your story is kind of like a best-selling book. You all have a story to tell in your practice. It's a book. It's a story to tell. But unless you market out your story, no one's going to really know about it. I don't know of any best-selling novel that was ever on the best-selling list that never sold a copy. So you have to be loud and proud about your patient experience in a HIPAA-compliant manner. Let's talk about HIPAA-compliant for a minute. Excuse me. Number one, the most HIPAA violations with reviews don't happen on the review collection. They happen in the responding. You cannot, if you don't already know this, confirm or deny that the patient was ever a patient of yours. Obviously, you can't give out any health information. So the HIPAA violations do not happen upon review collection. They happen on review responses. And obviously, when you're marketing out your patient experience, you can't use first and last names. When you have all these five steps, and I'm going to show you a slide on each of these that you can take some notes on to maximize in your practice. When you have these, I guarantee you that you'll have increased revenue because you probably know how many referrals you're getting from primary care doctors every single month. <coughs> but you probably don't know how many you're losing where somebody looks at your reputation, at those four things we talked about, and says, I may go somewhere else. That's the business that we want to capture. So you're probably saying, I get it, Carrie, but what the heck do I do now? I'm going to show you. Here comes the four steps of a blueprint of how to maximize your patient experience and drive additional traffic. Number one, review generation. You can't market out your story unless you get the story to tell, right? So you should have a process in place to survey every single patient encounter with a combination of signage. I'll show you some examples in a second. Review cards. Maybe someone can take a card home with them so they know that you want their feedback. And obviously, emailing and texting. You have to ask for feedback. It is a proven statistic. Seven out of 10 patients will leave feedback if you ask them to leave feedback and there's a process to follow up with them because generally the first time doesn't really make it happen. It's the second or third time. Reputation management, a process to manage and monitor your reputation with instant alerts and review responding. If you take the time to ask people for reviews and to give you feedback, good or bad, you should take the time to respond to them, let them know that you care. Reputation protection, is a process to get feedback even from the less than satisfied patients, but protect it from those negative reviews affecting your reputation. I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. But most importantly, where the magic happens is in PX marketing or patient experience marketing. You have to market out your positive patient experiences to your social media sites, your website, and search results. You have a great story to tell you ought to be loud and proud about telling it. Who's ever spent money on marketing before? Have you ever spent a dollar on marketing saying, we're not a good practice, don't come here? <laughs> Whoever says that? Nobody. But what really, my point being is that of course you're going to say how great you are. We all do. But what really matters is what your patients are saying about the experience that they had. Just like I'm going to ask Dr. Paul Rabinowitz to tell you about his experience with us. I'm going to tell you I'm great at what I do. Does it really matter what I say? 
It matters what my happy clients say. So review generation. As I mentioned earlier, this is an example of uh, not, not, our, not our client, of review signage where a location has signage in their practice letting people, letting patients know that they're a forward-thinking uh, practice and they want feedback. Making it easy for patients to give feedback is extremely important. Let's face it, the ones that aren't happy, do you have to chase them and beg them for feedback? Generally not. The ones that are happy is the golden asset that you have to kind of chase them and give them a process to be loud and proud. So review signage is very important. Review cards. When someone's leaving, we do electronic things now. We do texting. We might as well hand them review cards with their paperwork saying, please give us your feedback. It means the world to us. I'm branded for your practice. And then a combination of texting and emailing to get their feedback. You can't ask somebody once. You got to have a process to ask numerous times. When it comes to email and text, it needs to be quick and timely. You don't want to ask someone for a review three weeks after they visited usually within 24 hours is the key. And you, as I mentioned earlier, you can't email them or text them only once. Generally what we find is the second or third time that gets them to leave that feedback. But you gotta be careful, you can't over survey. You ever been over surveyed before? So I'll show you a process where you, you don't over survey people. Reputation protection. I'm going to be very, very honest with you up front. This one is pretty hard to pull off unless you have some technology to do this. But if you have a process in place, what we find a lot <clears throat> is that many businesses, including medical, are so scared of a negative review that sometimes they limit the amount of times they ask for positive reviews because they don't want that one negative review when you should be the other way around drown those negative situations with positive situations. But isolating and controlling that negative feedback is very important. We're a strong believer that negative reviews is a very, very good thing. If it's about a broken process, a team member, something you need to address that you wouldn't know otherwise. Negative reviews are a good thing. But by isolating and controlling those, you can protect your public reputation ratings that are online help you improve your patient experience. When somebody has a less than stellar experience, you want to know about it. Maybe you have that one rogue employee that you need to handle or whatever the situation is, right? You need that feedback. And it gives you complete control over what people are seeing online. Because like I said earlier, 91% of people are looking online. Reputation management. I mentioned this earlier, just like operations, just like finance, just like HR, you should be monitoring all the review sites 24-7. If someone is talking about your practice, good or bad, you need to know about it and know about it quickly. All of these sites have the ability to set up instant alerts, so you're notified immediately if someone's talking about your practice. And it's a place where you can house all of your reviews. There's software out there that you can sign up for that puts all of your reviews into one repository, so you don't have to log into 40 different sites. And then obviously, review and responding in a HIPAA compliant manner. <clears throat> but what I really want to talk to you about today is the patient experience marketing. This is where you absolutely can drive traffic to your practice. Spread the word, tell your story, be proud about those happy patients. How do you do that? You need to broadcast your positive reviews on your social media channels, right in the feeds of your Facebook. If you still use Twitter, right in the uh, feeds of your Twitter, and very, very soon, also on Instagram. Be loud and proud about the patient experience. Market the patient experience to the friends and family of your fan base on social media. The friends and family of your current patients is the lowest hanging fruit for new business for you. Make it easy for your current patients to share electronically how happy they are with the care that you provide and you'll see massive returns. Highlighting the positive reviews on your website. I'm sure you've been, all been talked to by SEO companies and website companies and they want to have that traffic on your website. While they're there, what a great place to tell your story. Not just your reviews, but reviews from all 
of the review channels, Google, Facebook, Health Grades, DotZop, all that, all in one place for people to see your reputation. Why you have them, be proud about what you do. And then showcase your positive reviews in search results. When someone's searching for the care that you provide in the area that you provide, let them see what happy patients are saying. Again, in a HIPAA compliant manner, which means not sharing that confidential information. Why is this important to everybody in this room? <clears throat> well, we believe that most practices or businesses fall into one of three categories. Number one, maybe you don't have a lot of reviews and not a rating that's significant enough. What should your strategy be? You should provide a process to convert more patients to leaving reviews. Review cards, review signage, emailing and text. Maybe you have a medium level of reviews because quantity is very important. Maybe a rating that's not so great because maybe you're not chasing the happy customers, happy patients. Your strategy should be to provide constant feedback to help correct any broken processes, but more importantly, give a voice to those happy patients. And then there's some, because I've looked at all of your reputations, that have an excellent quantity of reviews, have great star ratings, great reputation that you know about and your current patients know about. So your strategy is to provide a process to market out that patient experience, to tell everyone out there, come to my practice. That's your solution. So a summary recap of the four items. Number one, review generation. Process to serve, survey every single patient every single time. Signage, review cards, email and text. I see y'all taking some pictures of some of this. I'll be glad to share some of this later on. You'll have my information. Because you don't want me in the picture. That probably wouldn't be too good, I guess. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Reputation management. Just like finance and HR and operations, a process to monitor your reputation and talk about it. Don't talk about it just in your office, talk about it with your team. It's extremely important today. Reputation protection, a process to protect your reputation from those less than happy patients, but you want that feedback. Have you ever learned anything from a negative review that you didn't know about inside of your practice? Of course you probably have. So negative reviews are absolutely a good thing. But again, where the power is, is PX marketing. Marketing your patient experiences, be loud and proud on social media, website, and search results. Don't fall into that trap where you know you provide a great experience, your patients do, but the droves of future patients don't. You gotta tell your story, which is exactly what you should do, but I'm gonna take a few minutes to show you how we do that for our patients, for our clients throughout the country. Our solution, very, very quick and very, very painless, is called Reputation Sensei. He's the master of your own reputation. There's one of them right here. We have a few to kind of hand out. Ours does the same thing that we just told you about, but there's a couple caveats that I learned back from our patients. Number one, review generation. We install that process for you. Very, very turnkey, very, very easy. Reputation management, all of that stuff I told you about, monitoring and taking time to look at a CRM, we provide all that for you. Reputation protection, because we have the technology, we can share with you exactly how to protect your practice from negative reviews. But most importantly is the PX marketing, where we can be loud and proud about your patient experience on your behalf. As I mentioned when we first started, one of the things that we're very proud of is that we allow you to do what you do best and all this stuff I just showed you, you can absolutely do it yourself or you can turn it over to pros like us to handle for you. The, the green boxes I'm about to show you, we did a poll of all of our clients and this is what they tell me that they like about it. Number one, a seamless way to capture the patient experience every single time, which allows them to control what others are seeing about their practice online so that they can more effectively compete for that business of people going elsewhere but most importantly, the constant feedback that we provide helps them cultivate an environment inside of their practice focused on the patient experience. Having those meetings with the staff with real results to reward good behaviors and address less than, negative, less than positive situations. 
And when you have all four of these working together, it is proven that you'll have increased traffic coming to you, which should result in new patients. So how do we do it? Review generation. We produce these signage for you. Here's Gwinnett Pediatrics. Custom review cards, allergy. Mr. Dr. Paul Rabinowitz is here with custom text codes, making it very easy for people to leave reviews. Everybody has their own custom text code. And obviously, texting and email. How do we handle the negative situations? Well, let's talk about when someone's happy. When someone's happy with a four to five stars, we know they're happy. To use my pun for this industry, we've checked their temperature. We know they're happy. We walk them right to the public review sites that you think are important. In this example, it's Google and Facebook. Those negative situations, when someone's less than satisfied, again, we've checked their temperature. We isolate and contain that negative feedback, take them right to a landing page, let them vent, and alert you immediately that someone's less than satisfied. We can't keep them from going to Google, but usually if you address their concern very, very quickly, it does solve the problem, and that's what we call Sensei Guard. The power of marketing, number one, social media. We're always going on to our clients' Facebook pages and Twitter pages and wherever else, and we're constantly streaming out the positive patient experience. Their website, we're streaming in all the positive reviews real time with faces and identities of their patients, not identities from a HIPAA point of view, but their social media profiles and in search results. So we're bringing continuity to your brand. No matter where someone looks, they're seeing the story that you want them to see. How, how good does it work? Whether you do it on your own or you use us, this is Gwinnett Pediatrics and Adolescent Medicine. When they started with us, they had 36 Google reviews. Now they have 402. So this case study is 366 new Google reviews. Selma is not here, but if she was, she probably would tell you that they're seeing new patients at a 10 or 15 year high. 